Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King, and we come to you today from the press box here at Chapman Field on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. We're going to talk some baseball with head coach Scott Malone. We're going to talk with the director of tennis for A&M Corpus Christi, Steve Moore. We also got a special feature coming up on head men's basketball coach Willis Wilson about a nationally recognized honor he received this year. Let's talk some baseball, though, with Coach Scott Malone, who joins us at this time. Stephen, great to be here. Good to have you. Good to have you. We're coming into the final week of the regular season, and it all comes down ultimately to the final three games. And when it comes down to that Southland Conference regular season championship. Now, before we really get into that, I want to talk about this team in particular. You know, we're in a tremendous position right now, the distinctiveness of this team. Now, last year's team was known for power, leadership, that senior class you had. This team has a kind of a significantly new look. What was your squad's identity maybe at the beginning of the year? And after the really difficult season, the tough season that they always are, what's their identity now? Wow. Um, you know, good question. Get me thinking a little bit. Going back to the beginning, you know, I think we were built around, you know, the depth in our lineup. Seven or eight really, really talented hitters. Um, obviously, Stevens coming back off a big year. Jordan Lee coming back off a good year. You know, I think it, it was kind of built around those guys, which makes it a, a speed team, something we haven't had before, you know, and – uh, and, and I think that's where it started. Obviously, Trevor Belichick coming back off a 10-win season. Jacob Doris holding down the, the bullpen. And those guys have, have really gotten it going in the second half, really gotten it going. But, you know, now the emergence of, of Matt Danton and, and what he has become from a third starter to now a first starter and um, other seniors, Brandon Tierney, Russell Vaughn, those guys, if you look at, Stephen, what they're doing now compared to their, you know, stats last year, their career stats, those guys have really grown up in this program. And, uh, you know, you look at this team now, the Lamar coach summed it up for me at the end of the series. Your two starters on the mound are as good as anybody else in the league, and you've got the best closer. That's it. You know, and uh, he and I were discussing kind of where we fall with everybody else. And and I really love the, you know, obviously getting a little compliment about our arms. And this team, I don't know that we've ever been built around pitching, but it kind of turns out that's where we are down at the at the stretch. Well, let's talk about these last couple of weeks of action. Pitching obviously had a lot to do with it. Now, two weeks ago, you traveled to Abilene Christian, and you picked up a road sweep. Outstanding. There were a couple of tight ones in the series, no doubt, including that extra inning game in game one. Recap some of that for us. You know, I don't know how this is going to come across, but I thought we went to Abilene and kind of played our B game, to be honest with you. A little bit sloppy early. Uh, made some errors that we have not been making lately. Could put our pitchers in some tough spots. Gave up a few runs. Had to battle back. Now battling back has definitely been a calling card of this club. We've been really good in the in the late innings. So that part of it didn't surprise me. But I, I think Stephen just you know we got on the bus at Abilene and it kind of hit you like man we didn't play great. We just won three games. This program's really changed. You know the mentality of the kids has changed for us to go. And I don't want to put it too bad, but to go play our B game and win three games, you know, we've we've got some good leadership down there, you know. And then rolling into the Lamar weekend, the rain out on Friday brings us into what we thought was 18 innings on Saturday, turned out to be 19. Um, but just just so much heart, so many different players involved in that doubleheader. Yeah. It's really fun. Lots to talk about there. That weekend series against Lamar here was great for the fans. Unfortunately, we did get rained out on Friday, which created the doubleheader and considering how much the heat came into play, the heat and the humidity on that Saturday was a challenge. Now, you were forced to play game two uh, on that Saturday. Matt Danton was your number one starter once again. Solid performance, got some clutch hitting along the way, 5-2 winner. Got to be happy with that, no doubt. And then on the next uh, game of the day, Trevor Belichick comes out and is one of the best pitching duels of the season in the Southland Conference. And hopefully that pitching duel kind of wasn't forgotten considering we had all that great 10th inning fireworks. Yeah, you know, and, and I think you said it great, you know, talking with Matt Brady earlier today about Belichick and summing it up and, you know, might might get a couple of awards, might get his name mentioned here and there. And I'm thinking, you know, it, it kind of doesn't hit you because he wasn't there at the end. You know, he throws nine innings of outstanding baseball and we're still 0-0, you know, and we turn it over to the bullpen. We give up a run and then get two in the bottom. Unbelievable, dramatic finish. And I think it got away from me, the 12 strikeouts, only two hits. Just how dominating Trevor Belichick was against, and again, the number one hitting team in the league. Don't let that get away from you. You know, as hard as it is to go out and really have your A game, 
he did against the best hitting team in the league. So says a lot about Trevor and how good he can be when he's on. There's no doubt. Now let's talk about those fireworks now. Don't want to lose the pitching performance, but I do want to talk about the fireworks. Timely hitting. Um, every personnel decision that you guys had to make in those final moments worked out as if it was a pre-scripted event here. Now let's talk about the 10th and also remember... Let me ask you this. Do you remember a time where every decision actually worked? <laughs> no. You know, I, I told somebody earlier today, boy, those players made me look really good. You know, <laughs> where every little change we made, the player went out and did it. You know, and um, and, and I'm sure we're going to get into it here in a minute. But, you know, we the last one was probably the most debated one, the freshman Dawson Yates going into the game. where Because Josh Garza, you know, he is a shortstop who bets ninth every day. His job is to defend, but... He's gotten a few big hits along the way. He's kind of turned it on in the second half. So there's not this big doubt that surrounds him. He's a nine-hole guy, but he'll pop up and get a big hit. We decide to go with Dawson Yates, the lefty, because they brought in their sidearm closer. Um, strike one, strike two. I think it took about 15 seconds for him to be down 0-2 and have everybody kind of looking like, what are we doing here? You know, and <laughs> fights his way back into, I think, a 2-2 count. Bang, you know, walk off, which ended up being a single in the books, but I think he hit the ball all the way to the warning track to center. Um, just one of those moments as a coach, and, and it wasn't about the move, it was about the kid having a freshman in the game who doesn't have a lot of at-bats, hasn't been in a big conference game in a while, in a few weeks mm -hmm. for sure, to come up so big, see our team, and we've had big wins out here, Stephen, over the last seven years, to see 30 guys on a dead sprint, you know, across the field to get Dawson Yates, I think it really hits you. It's not just the win. It's not the walk off. We're playing for a league championship. You, you know, you, you kind of hit you. These guys know how close we are. It really made a fun day at the park. It was great. I'm going to tell you, it was just a great weekend, no doubt. Now let's get into the Sam Houston State series that, that uh, closes out the regular season and will ultimately determine the regular season conference champion. Uh, for an interesting note, I, I got to ask this. How is it possible that we're having to play Sam Houston State for the fourth year in a row on the road. You know, every conference is dealing with realignment. With with realignment becomes a redraw. You know, hey, let's reset this thing and start it over. And and there's some funny quirks in there. There's I've had a few coaches say the same thing to me. I feel like I'm coming to Corpus every year. You know, and just some funny draws. You know, my. Uh, my, my wife definitely thinks it's a conspiracy that we have to go to Sam every year. But, um, but you know what? Uh, this is how you draw it up. This is why you lift weights. This is why you get up at 8 in the morning and condition. This is why you do all those little things to put yourself in a position where the last three games are going to crown a champ. So, you know, I, I couldn't ask for anything more for our players who work so hard for this. Let's go play the best team in the league, and, and let's go see where we fall. Let's go. I know you don't need to break it down to your team. They're already very aware of the situation. Um, are the boys ready and to accomplish this ultimate goal? You know, they're ready. For sure they are. Um, concerns as a coach, it's finals week. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to be taking three tests this week. You know, I've got guys taking two, three tests this week. And, and, and they understand, obviously, they're here to be students first, athletes next. And as big as the prize is at the end of this weekend, we got to get through the first three days of the week first. You know, and I've got guys with, I see them right now, coach, one more test or two more tests. So there's a lot going on, you know, but I think it'll be a big relief when we get on that bus on Wednesday. School will be over, all the tests will be over, and we're going to go play 27 innings and crown a league champion. And, and Sam will get everything we got. We're going to be overly aggressive. We're going to take it right at them. If they get us, they get us. But they're going to get our best effort for sure. No doubt. Well, it's going to be an exciting weekend, and we encourage everybody to follow Islanders baseball this weekend as the conference championship is on the line. Coach, good luck. Sounds good, Stephen. Thanks. Scott Malone joining us here. Chapman Fell Press Box, Islanders Insider coming your way. When we come back, we have a special feature on Islanders men's basketball coach, Willis Wilson. Stay with us. More to come. You're watching Islanders Insider.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. This time we have a special feature brought to you by Teddy Medina, focusing on the national award, the Ben Job Award, that was presented to Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islander head coach, Willis Wilson. In April, Islanders men's basketball head coach, Willis Wilson, was named the winner of the Ben Job Award, given to the top minority coach in college basketball. The award had extra meaning to Coach Wilson, though. First and foremost, I was really surprised to receive the Ben Job Award. Uh, coach Job has always been a giant in our profession. Uh, he is referred to uh, that way in terms of his his stature and his presence in the game. He's not a he's not a big man, but he is a larger than life figure. Uh, he's been a role model for me uh, for the longest. I can't even remember uh, uh, my my first uh, encounter with Coach Joe, but for whatever reason, he took a liking to me, and he and I have had an opportunity to really share a lot of moments one on one, and and really to get to know what he stands for. And for me, he really enforced all the things that I wanted to be in a coach, wanted to be in a man, wanted to be in a father. Uh, gave me a great deal of uh, perspective on, on, on what it just means to be a coach. So to win a, an award uh, in his name, and in his honor, and to have him there to present that award, I think he was as surprised as I was uh, when I won the award. But uh, it was a real thrill just to kind of have that emotion together and to share that moment. That's something that I'll always remember. The award serves as an indicator of the progress the program has made and of where it is going. Well, to, to receive that award, to receive any award, I think, is, is an honor. But uh, there's no way in the world you can, any coach with a good conscience can accept an award like that without acknowledging the coaching staff and the players. Uh, I didn't score a basket the entire year. What we had was a situation where players and coaches really came together and bought into uh, winning and doing things together and to doing, the, doing them the Islander way. You know, what it also means for our university and our athletic program is the recognition we get throughout the country that, you know, that does mean and just show everyone that, hey, Texas A&M Corpus Christi is an up and coming basketball program again. Well, we're going to be back on the national map. And for us, that's a huge thing for our basketball program, our athletic department, our university in the city of Corpus Christi, because we want to get back to where we were back in 2007. And having Willis here and winning that award is just one of the steps that we're going to take to get there. Coach Wilson won the award over some noteworthy competition, including the national championship winning head coach of the Yukon Huskies, Kevin Ollie. Yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was some great names, and, you know, it's just when, he, when you're going up against people like that and you win the award, it just shows what type of man he is, what kind of character he has to receive an award like that. The award is given by College Insiders, an organization that hosts the College Insiders Tournament, which the Islanders played in back in March. Well, College Insiders become an icon in college athletics or college basketball. Uh, the things that they've done in terms of recognizing uh, the little guy in Division I, whether it's the small player or the small school coach, uh, what they've done with the mid-major uh, top 25 poll, uh, the College Insider uh, basketball tournament. Uh, they, they've gone out of their way to really recognize people that have done significant things uh, in the game. For Islanders Insider, I'm Teddy Medina. We'll be right back. What's Massage Envy Spa? For me, it's healthy, it's affordable. <sighs> I mean, he always wants... Pain relief. Right. And I want a healthier complexion. And now we can get a customized massage or a healthy skin facial... At a really good price. At a great price. <laughs> and nothing feels better than that. Customized massages and healthy skin facials, all at the perfect price. Start a healthy routine today with Massage Envy Spa. Go, you'll see. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. This time, let's talk some tennis with the director of tennis from Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, Steve Moore. How are you doing, Coach? Hey, welcome, Steve. Good to be here. First off, congratulations on a tremendous year. Uh, capped off with four pieces of hardware, trophies from the Southland Conference regular season and tournament titles here and now with the university. Fantastic. Both men's and women's programs, just spectacular. Now, not to discount the men, but we've kind of grown accustomed to, to them having their place in the Southland, but the women were spectacular, earning their titles for the very first time. Coach, uh, is this the beginning of a women's dynasty possibly? 
Um, the Southland is really, really deep. You know, six teams in the top 110. So it's, it's really a dogfight for the women to win it. Uh, but I do feel like, you know, last year, finals. This year, finals. Um, a lot of key players returning. Some really good signees. Um, I think that... Uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. Moving, I like that. We're moving in the right direction. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Now, for the women, you definitely saw growth in their games, the individuals, their attitudes and their returners, you know, the, the, the way they responded. Also, a huge shot in the arm from these, these young freshmen that came into play this year. Yeah. Uh, that combination brought you a title. It, it, it did. Tremendous senior leadership. The freshmen right away kind of grew kind of embraced our culture, really bought in right away. We're going to be a true team. We're going to fight. We're going to, we're going to always bring it. Uh, we may not be the flashiest, most talented team, but we're going to be the team that always shows up to play hard. Uh, they bought in, and they really, they really, I mean, the first, first conference match were at Stephen F. Austin, and it's three all-in matches, three all-in the third, and Judith Viva is a freshman is left on the court, and she rises up and wins, and everyone's screaming for her, and, and then we just kind of started kind of moving in that direction. The belief was there, no doubt. Now, on the men's side, Peter Naji, he's earned the accolades, no doubt. Two-time Southland Conference Player of the Year for the second time. But, again, this is Team Tennis we're talking about yeah. here. That's one line. Yeah. And that's one line. It's, it's across the board. You have to be strong in every position. And it's right. like you were absolutely strong all the way from one down to number six. It took him a little while to grow into their positions. We had got Javier Pujo played four and five last year, has to play three, has to learn the little nuances of playing three, certain things that he has to do better now than he did. But he did, and he rose up, and he really, um, he began to master that position. Ricardo Mayagoitia played four last year, now he's playing two. Took him a little while, but uh, those guys are fighters, and they got tremendous character, so I knew they would. It was just going to, it was going to be, how quickly we could we, we, we could coach them to, to, to believe that and, and get them there um, because they've got the character and the work ethic. If you were to look at both of your teams, the men's and the women's team, could you, I, could you define what their identity is for each of the two programs and what makes them believe they can beat anybody? Yeah, it's, it's, it's four cornerstones. Um, we talk about it all the time. We hammer these four things. Is the first is an absolute commitment to show up and play hard every single time. No, the biggest problem in college tennis is getting all six players to show up and compete like warriors every match. One out of six not, you're down 25% of the match. You, you've lost a point going to four. So that absolute commitment, whether you've had a long night studying or you've you got a nagging injury or any of that, that you are ready to show up and fight hard, no exceptions. The second is that they're really going to be a true team and um, and to really live that, to do more together than any other team. Um, the third is the encouragement and the spirit that, you know, it takes no talent to cheer like crazy for your teammates. And yet, you know, I see a lot of times uh, there's one player on the bench that doesn't cheer that much. You know, with these girls, with these guys, you know, if it takes no talent to do it and it's something you can control, then you should max it out. And, and they really do. Um, the way they encourage and cheer each other on, the spirit that they bring to the matches. And the fourth, and this is the toughest, and this is, this is the thing that I don't think gets talked about enough in sports, but it really matters maybe the most, is the athletic, disciplined lifestyle. You know, a lot of players want to win in the moment. Who's willing to prepare to win for the three weeks before? Get to bed at midnight. Eat right. Hydrate right. Avoid the toxic things. Um, that athletic discipline lifestyle that leaves you with superior fitness on a hot May day. Uh, they were very, very, very good about that as a group. Um, could always be better. I'm never satisfied because it's uh, <laughs> maxing something out, squeezing all the juice out of your orange uh, is never done. You squeeze 90% of it. But, uh, but those are things they can control and, and things that take no talent. No doubt. Now, your team's earned an invitation to the NCAA championships and both traveled to Baylor as they faced the host team. Uh, the men seem to be a 
really prepared for the competition, mind right. The women had a, had a tougher time in their first ever adventure into the NCAA. Going indoors was was rough. Um, we yeah, are the women's not... situation. The rain came and forced them indoors. Uh, unlike the men the next day who continue to play outdoors, which is what we're accustomed to. Yes. I mean, they have been trained all year that in April and May, it's going to be super hot. We're going to play a, a certain style, a lot of heavy balls, a lot of movement. We're going to run the other girl to death. Um, we're going to we're gonna really tap into our superior fitness and, and, um, and believe in our training. And all of a sudden, we got to go indoors. And they're a super athletic, physical team, Baylor. And that they... They stood up in the court. And they hit us off the court. Um, it killed me for the girls because I felt like outdoors on a hot, windy condition, which in all of the matches played in the NCAA tournament first round, 32 matches, 31 were played outdoors in a hot, windy condition. We were the one out of 32 that had to go indoors uh, against, against a physical indoor team. All the respect in the world for Baylor, super high level team, won the next day against Rice, you know, fairly easy as well. Um, but our girls had trained to play in a certain condition and they got something else and, and that was that was hard to swallow. And 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 they fought their tails off. Doubles was very close. Uh sure would love to see us be one of those other thirty two, you know, hot outdoors because that's that's where we're best and that's what we had kind of trained for. Um, the men got that and you saw a very close match, a uh, match where we really pushed. Um, the thing that also stung, but it's, you know, it's the cards were dealt was I thought both teams would get a low number three seed and we both were a very high number four seed. And, um, and, and that was our accountability. There was a few matches earlier in the year that if we would have won, would have guaranteed us a three seed and we lost them four, three. Um, but I thought, both teams coming in as a three seed, getting to play a two seed, a team ranked 26, 28. We were capable of taking that team out and then being really ready for the second day because it's all about fitness. It's been exceptional. Coach, you've had a tremendous year. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Steve Moore joining us once again here on Islanders Insider. When we come back, we'll tell you what's next for Islanders Athletics. More to come in just a moment. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we'll wrap up what's next for Islanders Athletics. Islander Baseball heads to Huntsville for the final regular season series to battle for the Southland Conference title against the San Houston State Bearcats starting Thursday, May 15th. Thursday's game will start at 6.30. They will then head to Conway, Arkansas, Wednesday, May 21st for the opening rounds of the Southland Conference Tournament. Islander Track and Field will be heading to the NCAA West Regional in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Thursday, May 29th, through Saturday, May 31st. Once again, thank you to Scott Malone, head coach of Islander Baseball, and Steve Moore, the director of tennis for Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, for joining us here in the press box today. Thank you for tuning in. This has been another edition of Islanders Insider. Thank you.